couple of the teams. There's actually many, many more. We saw My Insanity having a big role to play in StarCraft 2 for a while. Uh, but anyway, Bion is now down 1-2. Stats is on match point. I don't know who in the world can actually talk some calmness into him, talk some sense into him here, but I feel like looking at his face right now, looking at his play at the end of that game, he's already defeated himself. Yeah, it did not look solid, to say the least, and stats looking better than ever, uh, really regaining his confidence from that last one. The countdown has started. The fourth map is going to be Ruins of Ceres, another very big map. Can Pyun bring it back to game number five, or is stats going to close it out here? Let's find out now in game number four on Ruins of Ceres. Here we are on another big map of Runes of Saris. Match point here for stats. Down in the bottom left, in the red, the Terran player. It is Bion. The foreign fan favorite. But his opponent in blue, bottom right, representing KT Rolster, is the, the fan favorite in this studio tonight. KT fangirls have come. And as we've said, probably you guys have heard us say this at least once over the years, the most vocal fangirls in esports. <laughs> yeah, the biggest fan club, I believe, as well. Uh, always come down to all the KT players' games. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're on that team, you're <laughs> you're getting a cheer. You're getting a cheerleader squad with you to the games. Yeah. And uh, very loyal. I wonder how they feel about Flash's retirement. Probably lost a few members. Mm, probably seen, unhappy about that. Seen a few of those fangirls, like, literally fanning uh, Flash before. Past. Yeah, you made a gif of that on Twitter. Yeah, it's out there somewhere. Um, on the interwebs. On the interwebs. Not the outer ones, the interwebs. Yeah. Oh, we have, obviously, on this map, very aggressive, expanding for these two players as it is the biggest map in the pool. And we are at a horizontal spawns here. So it's, like, basically one of the shortest rush distance on the map. But it's, uh, it's still big, nonetheless. So you can get away with plays like this. Gun goes into triple barracks, though, which leads me to believe he's actually going to be following up a little bit of light pressure before he actually drops that third CC. Yeah, it could be that. I mean, it's kind of hearkening back to Heart of the Swarm, where it's like if you wanted to be safe against Blink, which was ultra popular back in the day, and you're going CC first, and you always make three racks. We saw Kira do it all the time. And funnily enough, on this map, Blink is very popular. It's very strong. You can Blink from the third base into the main. It's it's a gigantic ledge for you to blink into the main, get right on that production. Um, so, you know, just playing it safe with the three racks can definitely put on a bit of pressure himself if he wants to a bit later. Yeah, I think so. All this three three marine uh, squad at the top of the ramp. Tries to ward away this adept, but adept sneaky, gonna shade in. Cancels the shade, actually. Probably could have stuck around, to be honest, but just gonna play it safe. And looking at the tech here for stats, I mean, we've seen all sorts of different things that come out of this tech. It's like seeing a, a Terran player make a CC. You, know, you just don't know what's going to come next. Like when you see a Robo in a Twilight Council, it could be DT drops, could be Blink, could be uh, a Glaive push. It's actually one of the scary parts of Paros, and always has been mm. in StarCraft 2, is you never know exactly what they're going to do with the tech they've chosen. And it looks like it's going to be Blink. Yeah, there it is. As I'm saying it, it's the exact same build from the last game, in fact. Makes the the Observer into the two gates, and then the Blink has the follow-up. And uh, this SCV is going to be denied scouting as well, so... Bion's done a pretty nice job of going for a build order that will defend against this kind of play. But he does have to get some scouting done. He's already standing up the depots in the side of his base for scouting uh, in terms of Mothership Core that might come in for vision or just blink stalkers that might blink in. 
Yeah, Ben is really not cutting too many corners today, which I do like because he's he's not playing super safe so much that it's a problem. But I feel like what he's done here is basically built it in every game he's built an army that he can pressure with and he gets to it in a greedy way that's just safe enough. Like it's it's quite intelligent the way he's playing here. Now he's going pure marines, obviously as you guys can see. The observer will scout this and we'll see the double reactors on those barracks. Those it's a mostly marine army he's dealing with. And with Stalkers, of course, doing a push with them and pressuring with them is going to be very powerful versus Pure Marine because they don't do bonus damage to, uh, you know, basically the, the Marines don't do as well versus Stalkers as the Marauders do now. Um, looks like he just wants to pressure with this, like feign an attack. He's got yeah. um, a Warp Prism coming with this as well, and then he's going to take that third base. Yeah, it's only three gates this time. He's going to show to the Marine, hey, I'm warping in. You better prepare for this. Get a bunker up, you know. But as you said, third base back at home. And Stats can be in a very nice spot from this. I mean, he's not going to be attacking. He's going to get a nice uh, advantage back at home in terms of his economy, whereas Bion is going to be defending here for a bit. Uh, it's a long time before medevacs are out when you do go for this build. He is getting that starport now. But... Uh, you know, a long time before drops are coming in. Yep, Stim is finished. We are finally seeing the switcheroo on that uh, reactor so we can do double medevac production. It's going to try to sneak up here to the top of the base, and this may cause Bjorn to really panic. The third base, though, because he scared him so much, does have a bunker and a bunch of units there. So, or excuse me, the natural has a bunch of units there. So I don't think this attack at the front is going to do much. But this attack at the back is actually not responding very quickly to it. Yeah, looks like getting one SCV. They're doing a lot of damage to the rest of them. So not all that much damage, but as we were saying, I mean, he's keeping Bion in his base, and he's getting that third base up. He's getting very far ahead at this point. The stats doing some really aggressive play here. I like that. Three Marines dead on the ground after a move like that. Yeah, you trade some hit points and some shields, but it's always going to be worth it. And you have a third base, as you mentioned. Uh, he's got nearly 60 workers to the 45 of Bion, so his saturation is solid here. And I do think that, uh, you know, just looking at what stats is, is doing, the next logical step is to add that Temple Archive and start getting those storms, because this is almost a pure Marine army. The Glaives are going to do a lot for him here, of course, because they will shred those light units to pieces. Yeah, he's trying to add three gateways now, wants to get that production up, start adding these Adepts into his army. But the push is coming now. Byun may be able to put some amount of pressure on, but if the three gateways get up, get into warp gates, and we... We have a bunch of warp ins and immortals coming out. We should see an okay stats. He's even back in the blink forward, trying to snipe a medevac here. Bion wants to go for the kill, trading against a lot of these stalkers. Half of his army, though, not fighting there behind the force fields. I think he's just starting to get a little bit freaked out by all this dropping that's going on. Definitely a decent trade for him there. Look at the army supply. He's up 20, and he has a good composition here. He's also got medevacs coming out. So I like that he trades like this, but he needs to get more done than this very, very soon because he's still down a base. This base is not even finished yet, much less an orbital, and he's down 20 workers. He needs to do more direct pressure, or he's going to find himself too far behind. Stats are getting good upgrades, and I'm serious that Temple Archive is going to be coming up any second now. I'm not making this up. He's going to make it. Well, he's going to make Storm. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking on your computer. It's already on the production tab. Yeah, as you were saying, and... Uh I don't really know if Bion is going to be able to put on much pressure, even against a mortal stalker at this point. He's got plus one. He's going to have one one here soon, but the Protoss just finished plus one armor. Again, a lot of Bion's army is back at home dealing with these drops. He's had so much trouble dealing with these. Uh, well, at the same time, Stat's not paying attention, and it seems like Bion's army is, in fact, strong enough to trade against the Immortals, at least. Yeah, it looks like Bion is basically like saying, well, I'm having so much time so having such a hard time dealing with your multitasking, you must also be experiencing something similar, right? You're actually controlling those units. And when I stim to defend the drop, I just press T and then look away, whereas you actually have to micro and pull those guys out of there if you don't want to lose them to save your warp prism. And in that moment, he abused the fact that Stats wasn't looking and punished him for it really hard there, taking a small supply leader, but he's nearly doubling the army supply right now of Stats. So a big attack at the third base, if you can wipe it out, would give him a huge advantage here. Yeah, and Stats is having trouble uh, getting enough units out here to stop this. these attacks. Only Storm on the way now, but look at Stats' army. That I don't think that's going to be that much. He's really relying on overcharges here, but Bion fighting outside 
the overcharges very smartly. And now he's got a couple of widow mines to zone this unit, these units out yeah. while fighting on the top of the ramp. Really smart. He's going to try to grab that observer here. This moment of into um, you know basically. In insecurity, I guess, in this fight was actually uh, a big blunder here for Bion. He wanted to get that observer, and he was like not sure if he could get it. I feel like he could be like hitting that natural nexus so hard right now, but it gave Stats a little bit of time. Now he's up at the top of this ramp. Good micro here from Stats. Stats just needs a little bit more time, but Bion is not going to give it to him. He's going to attack right here, right now. Yeah, and Stats' army is split up at this point. He's got a lot on the top of the ramp, but that is not fighting. Here we go, coming down, but. Now Byun smartly fights only that army on top of the ramp. He's being very patient about how he engages this. And there's still two Widow Lines there, so with no Observer nearby, he hasn't been able to deal with those. There are two on the map. He's making a third one. I don't know where those Observers are, but he's not dealing with those. Okay, here comes one back. You yeah. may see that, actually. Look at this. Even though Storm is about to finish here, he has zero High Templar. Yeah, he's, he's got none. He doesn't have enough gas right now. He's producing units. I mean, he does actually have a big bank, but he's really struggling to make units right now. He's I, supply blocked. I think he's, not only is he supply blocked temporarily for a lot of this, I think it's because he's using so many warpins to try to stay alive that his gateways are like on cooldown. He can't even make High Templar. And this big Bioforce has been a wedge between these bases. And he has so many Widow Mines alive. I mean, this is a big problem. You can't just micro your way out of these. You have to hard engage. Look at this. And, and now, now he's liberators. in a good position with Liberators. Yeah, now Liberators are coming in and defending. But look at the stats. He's trying to, to harass there. But at the same time, look at this army of Bion just shredding everything on top of the ramp. And stats could not fight against those Widow Mines oh, even. Oh, he gets plus two just barely, it looks like. I mean, we are talking just, just barely. Just barely completed there. Um, Bion is just fighting half of Sats' army repeatedly. And look at the army supply again. I want to keep bringing this up. He's basically already got twice the army supply. And these Widow Mines are doing so much for him here. Now he's actually on top of the natural Nexus, killing all of these Adepts. The Adepts are even warped fighting. In. Yeah, and the Warpins are coming in here. bion has got a fantastic spot now in the concave behind the Minerals here. Look at Stats' units barely even fighting. A lot of these units of Bion are very weak. Yeah, he's just going to lift up and get out of here. But again, an amazing trade for him. He's doing, he's basically just keeping the army supply low. He's <laughs> just trying this. to get too much momentum. Stats does recognize this just in time, oh, but again, but eating another shot. Yeah, not with his army, he doesn't. And look at this, a ton of probes here stacked up in the main base. And look at this, he's actually also moving down this bio army at the third Nexus. Bion seems to be getting his confidence back. You don't see nerves in this game. Really fantastic multitasking so far. He just has twice the army that Stats does, so Stats can't do anything here. You know, he's, he's spread too thin in every sense of it, in every base. He doesn't have enough. Stats can barely even produce units right now. He's oh, man, those would have my hits. I think that's it, Brendan. I think that's GG. Yeah, he's down more than double supply here. Beyond beginning to focus down what's left of Stats' army. And G there you go. GG. Beyond is going to force a game five here. I am just so hyped for this series right now. Going into game five. Uh, trying to think which map it was. Was it Prion Terrace? We'll find out in a I think minute. It's Arena. Arena? Oh, that's yeah, even here we go. sicker, okay? <laughs> Why does this always happen where players are like, no, I want that on game five? I don't want to play that in any of the early sets. I don't want to lose a weird game there. So we'll save it for game five. And then when it gets there, we have an amazing game five because it's such a crazy map. You know, what we're seeing from Bion here. I, I saw it already, it felt like he was channeling a little bit of Marine King, but his wins throughout this entire tournament, whether it's playing TBZ or TBP, have been, and his TBT is a little bit different, right? But his TBP and his TBZ has been very much like what we saw Bomber of old, Holt of old, this tempo-based pressure play where you don't win by killing all the Paras' workers, you kill by killing his army repeatedly and snowballing it and parade pushing across the map, and eventually, just willing him down to nothing and finishing the game. And that's what we saw there. He played a lot of that game a base down, but just kept killing the Protoss army over and over again.